Okay, uh, just a follow-up video um, regarding the magnetic scales I installed on the Chipmaster. Um, I've been working on making some covers, uh, which were a little bit trickier than <laughs> I'd hoped, but uh, there we go. Um, one of the problems I had was I didn't want to attach the cover to the scale because there just wasn't enough room, um, even if the gap in the saddle here was wider, uh, the sensor sticking out so far you wouldn't be able to get a nice L-shaped cover, it just wouldn't work and it would stop the tailstock from travelling quite far. So I didn't want to do that, so I sort of had an idea to fix the cover to the back bracket, so the cover is stationary. Um, I'll just show you, so this is one I just bent out of some aluminium sheet that I had. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not a sheet metal person so <laughs> I don't have the right tools for it really so it was a lot of uh, fiddling around with blocks in the uh, bench vise and a uh, hammer. Uh, but this is what I came up with. Um, first of all I'll show you that I was worried chips might get in this small gap and on top of the scale which was why in the center of the extrusion there's a 4 mil gap um, and I filled that with uh, this felt. It's actually felt you use for um, furniture feet. Uh, so this is 5 mil, so it's just squeezed in there. Um, it does have an adhesive back, but I didn't use that. It's just wedged in there quite nicely. So this uh, rubs up against the inner side of the cover. So when that's down, it, it just causes a little bit of a or I should say it stops chips, hopefully, um, and oil from getting under and then falling onto the the sensor. I think this is all kind of a, you know testing as I go, but I'll uh, put those uh, screws in and then I'll, I'll show you a bit more. Okay, so it's a slightly different angle. So I've bolted that down and it's basically nice and snug against the felt. And then because it's obviously felt, it doesn't have a problem wiping back and forth. So that's just an added bit of protection to try and stop any little bits of chip. I've got this quite tight here anyway, as tight as I can. Um, but it was just an extra bit and the slot was already there, it made sense. I had all the parts. So that's the cover for the X-axis. I'll move that out the way. I did bridge, I just moved it over. I did bridge the gap here. Um, it's just slightly lower than the bottom of the scale. So the scale is pretty well protected in there. Um, as I say, I still need to make the stud for the tailstock, um, which will basically just uh, press against the saddle and stop it from crashing into the cover. Or the scale. I think it would be pretty good. Um, they seem to be pretty strong um, and they're protected in the extrusion but uh, I obviously don't want to damage them now I've put all the effort into installing them. So that's the X and I'll show you what I did for the Z axis covers. So the Z axis proved to be a little bit more annoying than I thought um, although there was less work involved making the cover. Um, it's not ideal. Um, basically I took a long strip and I bent it into an L shape and it might be hard to see in the video but it's actually pointing up slightly so down towards the back of the bed. Um, so I'm aware this will catch quite a lot of chips but there was no real way in the tight confines with the brackets for the hydraulic tracing attachment um, making this shorter there was no real way to have a sloping down cover um, so I'm going to see how it goes uh, the sensor is quite far underneath so it should be pretty well protected anyway um, I'm thinking it'll be okay <clears throat> I'll just have to wait and see when I use it a lot 
I'm typically turning on ferrous materials so I shouldn't have too much trouble uh, with chips sticking to the scales and I don't think they're going to get under the, this cover particularly. I was worried they might get trapped down here and slide down to the sensor but even then the back of the sensor um, blocks it from actually getting to the scale so I don't think there'll be any problems there. Um, it also slopes slightly down towards the tailstock end of the bed so it's higher by about 12, 13, 14 millimeters at the chuck end. So if I am running coolant or lots of oil, which is pretty rare for the stuff I do, it will run, or it should, gravity run down off the end where the tailstock is, which will go down into the chip pan, uh, which is, if you're not familiar with the chip master, the chip pan goes all the way around the front, the tailstock side and to the back where it's collected and recycled into the coolant system. So that shouldn't be a problem either. So <clears throat> this is the display I ended up choosing. Uh, it's an LCD. My milling machine has glass scales and one of the old style displays. Uh, at the time I didn't think I would like the LCD. So I thought I would try it this time. and. Um, so far, yeah, I like it. It's nice and clear to read. Um, it can be a little bit difficult to read the old style ones, at least for me. Um, but so far, so good. So I thought I'd just quickly show, obviously, the X. I do have it turned down to, for uh, Imperial, I've got it down to four decimal places. Uh, it does let you do five, but... Um, I find that's a bit annoying to be honest. So I've got it turned down to four decimal places. And then obviously the Z. Uh, unfortunately, generally, I think most of the ones I've seen come with X and Y. And X and Y. Uh, obviously, that doesn't really make sense for lathes, but I put some stickers on the Y here. Uh, I can't find a way to change the Y on the display yet. I have messaged the seller, so hopefully there's a trick to doing that. Um, it doesn't matter too much, it's just one of those little annoying things. But generally the display has the usual uh, inch metric, uh, ABS and INC. Um, there are some extra features there. Uh, you might be able to see those. Smooth arc, simple arc, linear hole, circumference hole, some of those are for uh, milling and I do have X diameter on because I'm used to this machine having um, diameter reading. Uh, there is a brightness setting but it doesn't do anything. Uh, I think it goes down up and down to 40% and from 40% it goes black. Anything higher than 40% is exactly the same so brightness doesn't do anything there. Um, Anti-shake I haven't looked into uh, but I don't think I'll need that. Uh, so that's that's pretty much pretty much it. It seems to be pretty stable. I did a very quick test, um, and it's accurate. You know, going back to the same point, taking several cuts, seems to work really well. I've no doubt it's going to help a lot, speed up some of the processes I do day to day, um, as this is a, a work machine uh, in my home shop. So. Uh, it's definitely going to help make things a lot quicker, a lot easier. I don't think I'll do a tool library, although it is possible. Um, some of the tooling I use swap in and out of a holder, um, like small boring bars, so I wouldn't be able to do that practically. So I'll leave that for now, but it, I think it can hold up to 200 tools, which seems to be pretty standard with these cheap import readouts. Um, but yeah, there's lots of settings if you go in. Um, so that's some of the details there. I think I can... Sorry, there's a bit of a glare, so it's a bit uh, washed out. Um, resolution. This is a 5UM. 
uh, inch dot. That's the decimal place I was talking about. That can be changed between four and five. Um, I would probably honestly change it to three places. It's just a little bit easier to read for some of the things I do, but four is great. Um, yeah, so there's a few things to change there. And that's about it. Uh, everything's in place. I just need to reroute some wiring I did, um, getting the main motor on off lever to work. So the last thing I need to do before I can put the lathe back against the wall is I wired up the motor start and reverse switch um, to the VFD, so that's the low voltage control uh, circuit. Um, took a little bit of fiddling around to get it to work. It's mainly the annoying part is the VFD and knowing which settings to change and it doesn't always seem to work first time even though you go around in circles but it's working now um, so that's something I've been meaning to do for a long time and it made sense to do it while I had the lathe out so I could get to the uh, contacts in the back uh, but that's that's about it for this one uh, as I say it's just a little bit of an extra update on the covers and how it's all going and uh, hopefully I can do some projects now <laughs> but we'll see plenty of things to do